Hi, I'm Richie Sposato. I'm the president of Lane Number One and also the ball designer of all buzzsaw bowling balls. Today we're going to teach you how to find your positive access point on a bowling ball. What we're going to do is we're going to map out your track. You want to take the farthest oil ring from the fingers and the closest to the thumb and mark that all the way around the ball. Just keep going around until both sides meet. Okay, there you have it. That's a track, that's your initial track of the bowling ball. Next, we're going to put it on this lane one axis finder, and basically, what this does is just spin your ball so you can get to your axis point. Now, you can notice how the how the track wobbles. And what we want to do is just situate the ball, rearrange it to take the wobble out of your track when you're spinning it. Once you've done that, all you need to do is mark the top of the ball with your wax pencil, and there you have your axis point. Now to find your dimensions, what you're going to do, you're going to draw a line through the center of your grip and split the distance of your thumb and your fingers. In this case, it's got about a four and a half inch span, so two and a quarter inches is the center of your grip. Okay, now we're going to draw a perpendicular line through the center of your grip over to the right hand side there. And now another perpendicular line right through your axis point. Okay, now you want to find the center of that circle, make another perpendicular line that you can see a little cross there. Now you can measure the distance from the center of your grip over to your vertical axis line and that's going to be one of your measurements. Right here is five inches. So we're over five inches and now we're going to be up an inch and a half. So on this particular ball this person's axis point is over five inches and up one and a half. Now these measurements are going to be critical for when you want to lay out bowling balls for desired reactions. You know, if you want to put the pin at certain distances from your axis point, you know, this will change how the ball rolls through the front of the lane, you know, and also how it hooks on the back end. It's one of the factors to be taken into account when you're looking for a specific ball reaction. And this person has a pin four inches from his axis point. And the CG in this particular ball is also four inches. So this is considered a stack, a four by four stack. When both the pin and the CG at the same distance from the axis point, that's what we call a stack drilling. And in this case, it's a four by four. Okay, now we're gonna teach you how to find the center of gravity of a bowling ball. The center of gravity is the heaviest spot of the ball. This helps control how the ball rolls down the lane. So first, we need to find this heavy spot, and then we're gonna coordinate that with your pin to give you different types of core angles when you're doing layouts. First we're going to do is going to draw a line right through the center of the label. The CG should be marked right in the center of the label but it could be off a little bit so this is why we want to double check every ball just to make sure that everything's the way it should be. And even if the label is slightly off all you really need to do is find out where the center of gravity is and, and map your ball from there. So first thing, we want to balance the balls. So we're going to put this front bar on zero 
and adjust this back balance arm, balance beam, until the scale balances on these needles here. You just want to run both fingers over like that to make sure they're balanced. When moving these balance beam, you want to move very precisely. You want to squeeze your finger on the bar and just nudge it slightly one way or the other. This will give you very small increments of movement which is necessary to to balance the beam. Now once we the beam is balanced what we're going to do is rotate this ball 90 degrees and rebalance the scale. But we're not going to move any of the, the balance beams. We're going to rotate the ball until the scale balances. Now if the scale is up high, if the ball is heavy, we're going to rotate the ball in to the scale. Because the scale reads the outside of the scale as far as the weight. Okay, if, the, if, the, if we need to bring this needle up, we're going to rotate the ball to the outside and do this until this ball is balanced once again. Just put your hand underneath the ball, just squeeze in the ball in the cup, and ever so slightly, you know, moving the ball one way or the other until you get a good balance point. Okay, the scale is balanced once again. We're going to draw a perpendicular line through the last one and do the same procedure once again. We're going to rotate the ball 90 degrees again. Okay, it's pretty much balanced. I'll draw another line. One last time, rotate the ball 90 degrees. And adjust the ball to the outside or the inside until the scale balances. And as you can see, the scale is balanced again. And we're going to draw another perpendicular line. Now you should have a box. You can see this is a very tight box. In the center is the center of gravity. As you can see, this label is marked just about perfect on the ball, but it's always a good idea to double check. And now there's the center of gravity. Now this coordinate, this center of gravity in the pin, you're going to use these two coordinates to give you different types of core angles that you're looking for. Okay, you can have the CG out, kick the CG out. That's going to give you an earlier roll. Or, you know, the CG out will also give you a smoother reaction off the dry. An earlier roll in the oil and a smoother roll in the dry. This is a very good layout for crankers. Crankers, power players, or if you have wet dry conditions. Or you can turn the CG in twisting the pin out to like a 130 position so the pin is actually closer to your positive axis point. This will give you more length through the body of the lane and more continuation on the back end through the pins. This is good for bowlers you know, who want to stay behind the ball a little bit more or if you have to move left and throw the ball right, cross more boards, this layout will give you a stronger reaction down the lane. Whereas the CG out, because of its earlier roll and smoother reaction, is, is better for a low type of track player. Or if you want to try to control the amount of hook down the lane off the dry. Okay, now we're going to explain the differences between a short pin, a medium pin, and a long pins, and you know how that affects your ball motion. Short pins, you know, you can see the pin is close to the label, close to the CG. That means that the core is more perfectly centered inside the ball, more balanced. These types of balls are going to roll earlier and give you a smoother reaction off the dry. Whereas the longer pins 
the core is actually situated off center to give you more lope as the ball rotates down the lane and also it's going to give you more flip down the lane. So you want to choose the right pin distance for the type of ball reaction or the type of release you have. As I said earlier, the short pins are going to roll earlier. These types of balls are good for bowlers with a lot of speed, bowlers, or with bowlers with a lower track because this helps get the ball into a roll. Bowlers with a higher track want to use pins farther out. This gives the ball down the lane for them and more flip on the back. And that's what higher track players need because they're rolling the ball more end over end. They need more imbalance in the balls. Also, how to lay out the shorter pins and the longer pins. Now these shorter pins, you want to do more 130 angles. Like that. Because the shorter pins roll earlier, we don't need to lay out the ball to roll any earlier, so we're trying to get a little more length and a little more flip out of them. You also want to do use that combined with some more finger weight and side weight. So the shorter the pin, the more you want to tip it towards your positive axis point and, and tip the CG in towards your palm. Also, more finger weight, more side weight is going to help give you a stronger reaction down the lane. The longer pins, you can use more with the CG out. Because the longer pins go long and flip harder naturally, you want to get a little more control of these. So you tip the CG out, which gives you an earlier roll and tends to give you a smoother reaction. This is good also for the crankers to CG out. You know, the higher track players, if you don't have a lot of turn, side turn on the ball, then again, we want to tip the pin out 130, tip it closer to your positive axis point, keeping the CG towards your palm. This will give you more length and more flip on the back end.